Good evening ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the most monumental channel here on YouTube, D-E-I-V-E-D -E -E is my name, welcome back to Let's Read Live, the show where we talk about the stock market, take a look at the news and we even do some technical analysis. Holy mofongo today, what a wild ride indeed in certain areas and what a wild ride for even the crypto market. Let me know how did it go for you today in the stock market, how did it go for you in the crypto market, whichever you want to share. What is that golden nugget? What is that lesson that you have learned that you want to share with the community? We are all ears and if you have any questions, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and ask the question. No seas tímido, man. Pregunta, porque es la única oportunidad. There's so many amazing entrepreneurs and investors in this community that I just suggest starting with a simple hi. Say hi to the community, my friend, because we do these videos con mucho, mucho amor. Dudes and dudettes, chewies and chewettes, I know that you're wondering what the heck happened today. In the stock market, David, with the pot stocks. Well, don't go just yet because me and Chewy, we're gonna find out. Don't forget to go ahead and do a to the like button. Don't forget to ring that motherfucking bell so you get notified every time we are online. Bruh. I know, I know. You want me to get right into it, but. You know what? I want to remind everybody that if you go to youtube.com slash D E I V E D and you go ahead and check out that Amazon gift card giveaway video, maybe you will have a, an interesting opportunity ahead. Okay, guys, I'm not going to say a lot. And let's go ahead and continue. Let's get started. Let's because my computer is already making noises, okay? So I gotta, I gotta move forward, guys. Maybe the audio is not perfect. Hopefully it is perfect. If it isn't, I apologize, but I gotta do the videos. It takes a while to review all the news that we got. And I do wanna get to your favorite symbols right as soon as we are done with the last article, which will be Moderna. Well, actually, no. It could be Helion. It will be Helion. Because Moderna, I'm going to talk about it pretty soon. It will be Helion. After Helion, you, we will get the request. Okay, my friend? Okay, Randy, does that make sense? Oh, yeah! Okay, well, let's get started with this summary from Seeking Alpha. Let's go ahead and remove the banner and let's get it started, guys. Semiconductor stocks stand out in another non-committal day for the market. So chips and pot kept things interesting in trading today, but the broader market had an indifferent performance for the third straight session. The S&P 500, 0.2%, ended just higher on very late buying in the middle of today's range. The Nasdaq 0.4% was the best performer and the Dow closed flat. The Russell 2000 negative 0.2% fell again after breaking a solid win streak yesterday. The rally in bonds also took a pause. As with the 10 year treasury yield rising to 1.16%, energy was the weakest on the SP sectors. Information technology was the only SP sector that really gained any traction. Okay, semiconductor and chip equipment stocks rallied across the board with President Biden planning an executive order to review supply chains. <laughs> Interesting. Marijuana stocks run the other way after retail investor enthusiasm before the bell whipsawed into sharp selling through the regular session. Among the new issues trading today, Lone Depot gained more than 45% and Bumble rose 60%. Ladies and gentlemen. Yes, and we'll be covering Bumble here and there. And it's very interesting. And I do have more articles ahead, guys. I want to take a look at... Man, we got a few things to review. We're going to check out the COVID vaccines. So we're going to talk about Moderna. Uh, Bitcoin, 
obviously Riot, SPCE, Space, GME, BlackBerry, Boeing, LUV, PayPal, IMPX. We're going to talk about the marijuana. Okay, guys, ACB, Tilray, Sundial, Twitter, Disney, Netflix, Datadog. I'm still thinking if I should do it or not. Frog, iRobot, Tesla, and Helion. I may move things here and there, but I just want to get things out of the way. Once we review bitty, bitty Bitcoin, I will say hi to everybody just to get the flow going because I know there's a lot of people that have told me, Oh, David, you are doing too many boom chakalakas over here, bro. Too many boom chakalakas. I don't want to watch you, bro. And I'm like, okay, sorry, my friend. I am sorry. I'm trying to make it fun while we look at Microsoft Paint. <laughs> okay, guys, let's review over here. Biden to announce a deal for another 200 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines. So President Joe Biden is expected to announce later today, or this was actually, well, 3.57 p.m. Hey, I don't know. Did that happen? I don't know. A new agreement to secure 200 million more doses of COVID-19 vaccines. The Washington Post reports citing people familiar with the matter. Last month, the president announced that his administration was seeking another 200 million more COVID-19 vaccine doses, 100 million doses each, of the two authorized vaccines from Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna. Meanwhile, citing the government's existing vaccine deals reached with companies including Johnson & Johnson, the analyst at JP Morgan has projected a requirement of 0 to 30 to 60 million more doses to cover the entire U.S. population. Dear readers, Oh, by the way, it says, we recognize that politics often distress. By the way, the videos are for entertainment and learning purposes. I want you to all be clear about that, okay? Don't be coming, oh, David, your videos suck, but, you know, they're not cool. I'm like, man, that, that's a bad comment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm not fitting your, your flow. But anyways, guys, U.S. government purchases additional 100 million doses of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine. There you go, guys. Moderna announces that the U.S. government has purchased an, an additional 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine, bringing its confirmed order commitment to 300 million doses. The company said that it has supplied 41 million release doses to the U.S. government to date and added that it remains on track to deliver the first 100 million doses in the first quarter, followed by the second order of 100 million doses in the second quarter of 2021. Moderna said that it is working with its domestic manufacturing partners and the U.S. FDA to continue to explore ways to accelerate delivery with the goal of providing this new order of 100 million doses before the end of July. More than 22 million Americans have received Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine in the U.S., according to the, to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Let's go and review Moderna. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm revealing. No, 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 no. Don't see that. Don't see that, guys. Don't see that. Let's review Modernis. Oh. What is that? We're making profit. We're making profit. What is that? It is Moderna. It is going up. Oh, my goodness, guys. Moderna already starting the day. Over here in the channel, making us happy. Here's the thing. Not everything's going to move into one direction, right? So we got to capitalize on other opportunities. For example, Moderna providing us the upside 33% from the last break of our resistance with good entries. And I do believe that there is potential for Moderna to reach $218, $222. But David, how do you know that? Because we did the Fibonacci. And you know what? I'm going to do the Fibonacci right now in this particular level that we got. So let's do it. And, but David, is that 100% accurate? Are you a mind reader? No, I'm not a mind reader, bro. I wish I was a mind reader, uh, but that will be kind of weird. I'm going to be very honest. I don't want to listen to everybody's mind. Otherwise, I will go insane. Just, just imagine working with this guy. Oh, my God. This guy is, has a lot. This guy is a genius. That's the thing. His mind is always working. <laughs> His mind is always working. And as you can see, guys, the Fibonacci for the short term. But David, 
Let's see over here, guys. So, yes, there's potential to even go to 228. That's a 22% increase. It makes sense for Moderna. And it's starting to look very good to break out of the resistance, guys. So, as you can see, a little bit of upside retracement, creating a higher low, retesting the break of a re resistance level over here and creating a support. Definitely something to keep an eye on. And from Modernis, I can definitely look at PFE. I want I'm very interested in PFE and BNTX. So let's do PFE, Pfizer. And Pfizer, I'm just waiting for Pfizer, as you already have seen. I want to see a break of a trend line to confirm me that it can continue with the upside. It is a good company to get dividends, but I don't know. Sometimes you can get it a little bit lower and you are looking for something like that. No, but I'm still bullish on it for the long term. It kind of makes sense to me, but we'll see. And BNTX is the one that actually has been doing amazing with all of this information. Let's see if that's right. So BNTX is still going well, still above 5%. I'm waiting to see the $131 level. Kind of makes sense me. It makes sense to me. Just waiting patiently to see that $131 level to be reached. But Moderna, ladies and gentlemen, is the winner. I'm going to be very honest. My sister and my mother actually got the Modernis. So, guys, doing good. Not bad. It looks very, very good. What do you think, Randy? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Randy. Okay, guys, let's move forward from Modernis. Let's get to Bitcoin. Wow. And after I do Bitcoin and Riot, and I'm going to be reviewing Mara and MicroStrategy, I'm going to do them. And guys, when I do that, I'm going to say hi to everybody. So if you want, say hi to everybody. Everybody said hi to each other. Come on, guys. Let's make it. Let's provide it to the people. Con mucho, mucho amor. You know, with a lot of love, we do the videos. And guys, tell your favorite YouTuber that David and Shuey send a lot of love. Con mucho, mucho amor. I don't know. Something like that, bro. Something like that. Something like that. Be original, man. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this article about Bitcoin that I want to share with all of you. I'm very um, pumped up about this. And, guys, um, this one, Edwam, shout out to you, my friend. He actually was like, David, check out this article. I'm like, let me take a look at it. So we're going to review it together, guys. Let me know. Are you investing more in Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Dogecoin? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it, guys. I'm going to do the freaking... I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to get to my YouTube.com slash David. And I'm going to connect to the community. Okay, guys? I mean, I'm going to post right now what crypto... Are you investing? Are you investing? That's it. Investing in? There you go. I'm going to leave it like that. That's a poll. I'm going to put Bitcoin. Let's do Ethereum. I'm going to add. Some people have been saying ADA. Hmm? Maybe Chainlink. Some people are looking at Chainlink. Let's add XRP. Oh, I, I forgot about Dogecoin. E which one am I going to take out? I'm going to take out Chainlink. Sorry, sorry, guys. But I'm going to leave Dogecoin over here and see what happens. Guys, I want to see those results. Posting it right now. Let's see what we got. In it. Okay, guys. Bitcoin now targeting 95,000 by middle of April, according to analyst Preston Push. Wow. And by middle of April, February, March, April, <gasps> like in a freaking month and a half. Holy mofongo, guys. What? Hadouken, indeed. Peter Luneto, thank you for the support and bienvenido to the community. When you go to youtube.com slash David, go to community and you will have the keys to the kingdom, my friend. Welcome and thank you for that blessing. Market analyst and prominent podcaster Preston Pitch says Bitcoin is poised to continue its parabolic ascent. In a new episode of What Bitcoin Did Podcast, Pitch said, oh, should I do it in the podcast version, David? 
speech says Bitcoin will prove critics and naysayers wrong in the coming months as he believes the leading crypto asset will outperform beyond expectations. I think it's going to be epic. <laughs> I think I think the price between now and mid April is going to be gangbusters. I don't th <laughs> I don't think this guy said it that way. I think it's going to be epic. I think the price between now and mid April is going to go it's going to be gangbusters. Way more than people are expecting and I and then I think you're going to going to go through some natural chop in volatility from there into the six figures by mid-summer into the fall. I think it's going to be fascinating to watch. Or I can't wait to see the CNBC talking heads still not understand it. It's going to be fun because everyone's looking at it and they're saying, what is this thing? This doesn't make any sense. The same thing that you've seen with all the people that have been long Tesla and all your traditional folks that were saying, oh, it's going to die here, is the same exact lens being applied to Bitcoin, but probably 10x more so. Wow, that's, those are powerful words. As for the exact price of Bitcoin, pitch refers to a tweet that shows Bitcoin pulling off a steep rise and printing gains of over 106% in two months. I redrew it, and that's why I'm saying on the chart whether this happens or not. I have no idea, but the redraw that I just recently posted, I think last week, has the price at 95000 in mid-April before it starts going to going to some shop interesting interesting guys so i do believe that bitcoin can definitely continue i guess he's following his exponential moving average but i just want to take a look at bitty bitty bitcoin and see what it's doing today guys a lot of people have been telling me hey david uh, that thing about bitcoin bro that you always talk about yes my friend well guys bitcoin today just to show you the reality of the price right now is that bitcoin did go up with a bullish engulfing so i think a lot of people were actually capitalizing on bitcoin for that small drop that he had at 43 look at that he just went up 6.8 percent okay he has gone very very good and the thing is that the opportunity that tesla has right now leading the way and not actually leading the way because MicroStrategy was there way ahead, right? And other companies. But then Tesla appearing to be part of this. I think it will open the door to even more. This morning, we saw MasterCard opening the door to Bitcoin. Yes, guys, another interesting fact that we read this morning. So 95,000. Let's go ahead and, and add that target over here. So we're just collecting targets over here, man. Let's see. Uh, this guy is Preston Pitch. What was it? Preston Preston Pitch. See over here. Copy this name. And let's add 95,000. And if you think about it, it's like starting the companies from the S&P 500 and Edouard Murati, a shout out to you, my friend, because he shared this with me. It's like, that's the game changer. He said, that's the game changer. And even, uh, I think, Mark Cuban, do you say, Edouard? I don't know if Edouard is here, but even Mark Cuban is starting to get interested in Ethereum. I don't know, something like that. You know what? I want to take a look at Ethereum right now, guys. I want to see what's it doing. So ETH, USD, 1791, 57. Let me look at the daily. Papo, this is starting to look super bullish, bro. Mira para allá. Let me see if I can find that article that um, my friend Edwam shared with me about Mark Cuban. I want to I wanna make sure that I want to read the, the correct title at least. Let me see. So this comes from the crypt. Okay. Here we go. Paste and go. How Mark Cuban and others are selling tweets on Ethereum. A new platform that lets users buy and sell tweets has already seen $270,000 in offers. Here, here's how it works. Interesting. This came out 
today, guys. This came out today. So let's let's just take a look at the brief and see if we can learn something from it. So selling tweets as NFTs is a growing business. Scent has reported that more than $270,000 has been offered to tweets so far. Some big names, including Mark Cuban, are already getting in on the emerging business. Interesting, guys. And this is, yes, this is why uh, even Reddit is getting now interested in Ethereum. But, guys, looking at the technicals alone, I do see a lot of upside. I think kind of makes sense to continue to even 2000 and even higher than that, guys. I think there's a lot of volume that can take it to another level. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Let's see right now. Let's see Dogecoin. Why not? Let's see Dogecoin. A lot of people had a lot of uh, interest in Dogecoin recently because of Elon Musk. But right now, as you can see, Dogecoin broke a trend line. It is going down following this trend right now. Once we reach maybe the 50 EMA at six cents, it may be a game changer, but maybe not because I'm starting to see that there is another trend line that we got to revisit. Kind of makes sense. Maybe 0 0.05. Keep an eye on Dogecoin. It was a joke coin and now it's starting to become into something. It even has good structure. I like the structure. I like the structure a lot. If this gets to break, if this gets to break the resistance like this, and it goes back down, creates a higher low, then it can continue. That thing can happen. It can happen. So I'm going to let it ride and see what's happening. Always use disposable income when investing in something that you don't understand and something that it was a joke. Think about it. Now let's review Riot. Let's review Riot's blockchain stock climbs as new miners boost hash rate. So Riot blockchain stock jumps 14% in pre-market trading after announcing it will achieve an estimated hash rate capacity of 1.06 exahash per second with the deployment of newly received 2002 S19 Pro and miners. The point is that we want to review Riot blockchain in the charts and ladies and gentlemen in the daily you can even see that Riot did go higher than what we were waiting for. It guys even reached our target of 46. It reached 46. Uh, how much is it? 46 60s. And it just retraced back down a little bit to 43. But as you can see, guys, it has been doing well, even with the market going down 16.8%. So as you can see, when the market goes down in, in a certain sector, you can see that there's a leverage in the other. So, ladies and gentlemen, definitely an interesting ride for Riot. Oh, you but, 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 David, what about Mara? Well, let's take a look at Mara, bro. Let's take a look at Mara. I'm sorry, man. Let's do it. Mara today, $37.27. It created higher highs and higher lows. It is a bearish candle, but it reached our first target. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations on that. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, you can yeah, broke the resistance of 28 and it reached our 39. Almost actually it reached 40. I'm still expecting the $55 level to be reached, but I wouldn't mind to see a little bit of a retracement back down to the trend line to keep it in the trend to make it stronger. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get to micro strategy and I'll be done with the crypto sector or companies related to the crypto sector and 1009 for MicroStrategy. The weekly is still bullish, created a higher high, which is beautiful. But I want to see now a close of that candle becoming bullish or staying bullish. I would love to see that happening. If that doesn't happen, that will suck. But I think it can happen. If it gets to drop next week to $2,800, that will be an opportunity. I, I'm, I'm ready for anything, guys. I'm ready to fight. Okay, so let's move forward now to say hello, hello to everybody while I leave bitty, bitty Bitcoin in the background. And let's see who we got. I'm sorry for those who are on the TV. I'm going to say hi very quickly to the people in the community because, you know, I'm tr I try to balance it. I try to balance it. Let's see over here, guys. So, Jason Park, good to see you. Mar Senchi, bienvenido. Matthew... Real Rx name, but David stranded in PR. Good to see you. Good evening, Shuets. 
Good evening, Ricky Hueso. What's up, my friend? Good to see you. Reigns MX. Good to see you. Greasy Nugget. Greasy Nugget. Greasy Nugget. Real Exin. Patrick Ciareta. Good to see you, my friend. Brandon Morris. Good to see you as well. Cloud Shack. Good to see you. Princess Agnes. Bienvenido, mi hermano. Yo. Jonatico. Aisha Jackson. Let's see who else we got. Ferrad Agdag and Clara Liriano. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be reviewing a few symbols coming up. SP SPCE. I'm going to review GME, BlackBerry, Boeing, LUV, PayPal, IMPX. You know what? I want to do IMPX right now. I want to do IMPX right now. And then I'm going to talk about the marijuana. We're going to do the marijuana. Yes. ACB, Tilray, Sundial. I want to review Twitter, Disney, Netflix. I want to do Datadog, JFrog, iRobot, Tesla, and Helion. If you don't want any of that, let me know. Maybe I'll cut it from the list. But I'm going to start with IMPX because shout out. I want to give a shout out to the members. Members, if you are still doing some, let me know in the chat room, my friends. I really want to hear you out. And ladies and gentlemen, this goes to my friend, Yoram Shang. He was the one that was like, David, I am PX, bro. And in Pixon, to provide its CO2 sensors to help identify COVID-19 infection. And then the shares have surged. In Pixon, shares jump after announcing the distribution of its carbon dioxide sensor modules for use to measure indoor air quality, an important indicator of SARS-CoV-2 and other pathogen transmission risk. The distribution will be carried out by Unitronic, a European distributor and integrator of sensors, communication equipment, and other electronics. Under the agreement, Unitronic plans to sell Impixon's CO2 sensor modules as well as additional Impixon products to its existing base of OEMs, system integrators, and solution providers. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a look at IMPX. Holy mafongo, bitty bitty bitcoin. Man, sometimes some areas go down and some just go up. That's how it is. Keep that in mind, guys. Wow, IMPX, my friends. I actually enter on this one with my friend Yoram Shang today. Whoa, 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 better, better, better. Let's look at this once again. See, Papo, look at that, guys. So, this is a beautiful thing. It created a higher high at $2.88 from one dollar and seventy cents guys the structure was indicating that it was gonna look for upside and it actually did it he broke the resistance over here and he went up and look where he stopped very very close to that price point that was over here at two dollars and seventeen cents so that's our resistance you can see that but guys i do believe that this one has a lot of potential I wouldn't mind seeing a lot of a little bit of a retracement, but it seems like IMPX can definitely be going higher to six, seven, or even twenty-nine dollars. I'm gonna keep an eye on this one. This is a very fast-moving company. Already has done the move. Now we are just waiting for the next move. For example, if it gets to drop back down. Is an opportunity. I think there could be some opportunities for IMPX, but at the end of the day, I'm looking for more upside, and there is great potential for this to go higher. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it. You know what? I'm gonna do. Should I do it? I don't know. This Fibonacci is not gonna be that great. See that? It reached where it needed to be reached. So I'm just gonna wait. Maybe let's see over here. Nah, no, guys. I can't do the Phoebe Phoebe. Okay, maybe over here. Maybe over here. Okay. Nah, I can't do the Fibonacci yet. I want to see a little bit of a drop. When we get that drop, that will be the best opportunity. So I'm going to keep an eye on IMPX, ladies and gentlemen. And you know, I ended with X and I want to take a look at SPCE because it's space. I don't know how I made that connection, but 
Leave me alone. I'm going to review Virgin Galactic SPCE. This is the David show. It's not the Green Tom show. This is my favorite show because it is my show. Virgin Galactic pops after FAA action tips. Test flight could happen this weekend. Virgin Galactic is up 7.67% as investors take a positive stance on the opening of the company's test flight window on Saturday. CNBC's Michael, Sh Michael Schitz says the flight appears to be on pair as FAA temporary flight restriction filed today for a two-day window. The rally in SPCE follows a downgrade yesterday from UBS on concerns over the start stratospheric move higher in share price so let's go ahead and take a look at motherfucking spce ladies and gentlemen space a big topic even today i was watching some videos about um from kathy wood man and let me be very very honest i like the way she speaks i like how she thinks kind of very very cool very very cool to watch if you have an opportunity watch a um an interview of kathy Kathy Woods, that would that would be awesome. Oh, Kathy, Kathy Woods, I don't know how you say it, bro. SPCE, Virgin Galactic Holdings, woo! David, what is that? We're making profit. We're making profit, but David, what is that? Even though the market is down, we're making it up. Oh, David, what is that? Guys, I'm telling you, opportunities are always there. Even when the market goes down, in some areas it goes up. Virgin Galactic actually making the move higher. Look at this beautiful thing. thing. 12.5%. I do believe that it can go to 62, even to 69, 77. There is a lot of potential, especially in this new market, guys. This is going to be a totally new market. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and review this. $80.00 could be a good target i'm gonna add 92 and i'm gonna add even 99 guys not 100 99 that is a beautiful thing thing about the phoebe 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 can you see we're gonna do the fibonacci to get some price prediction and there you go guys look at that potential to go for our, our first investment or our last investment will be 19.3%. After that, I see 69. That will be a 32% move since our in last investment. $80 to 53 and 92 will be 74%. But David, what about $99? That will mean that it moved 88%. If you calculate your risk and your reward, if it makes sense, it makes sense. Do you like the area? Maybe yes, maybe no. I think there is a great opportunity for space. And it is insane that we're just be here in these levels, guys. We capitalized since $9, and now it is at $59.43. Let me know if you capitalize on this opportunity in the chat room or in the comment section with a... Or give me some coins, members. Holy mofongo, my friend. <laughs> Let's, but David, there's too many sound effects. Oh my goodness, my friend. But what do I need to do to make it better for you? Do you want me to bring you a Capri Sun with with the straw already inside the Capri Sun? You know, because sometimes it's hard. Let me see over here, guys. So this is an interesting article that I wanted to review. This was the reason why I actually was like, ah, SPCE. But even though this one does not have a chart, I do want to review Starlink Internet Service begins accepting pre-orders. Ladies and gentlemen, SpaceX started a public beta program of Starlink in October, but it is now widening the scope of the test, accepting pre-orders from potential customers. Starlink already amazed, amassed, 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 not amazed, amassed over 10,000 users in the United States and abroad in the three months since the public beta began. The service is priced at $99 a month in addition to a $499 upfront cost to order the Starlink kit plus shipping. The kit includes the Wi-Fi router and a user terminal known as a dish to connect to the satellites. Some regions are showing pre-order messages that say SpaceX is targeting coverage in your area in mid to late 2021. 
while other pre-orders list 2022, the service will be offered first in the US, Canada, and the UK. The full Starlink network, also known as a constellation. Wait, 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 guys. Let me do it. Let me do it right. Constellation. Will consist of 11,943 satellites that fly in low Earth orbit and beam high speed internet to anywhere on the planet. Once we can predict cash flow reasonably well, Starlink will IPO. Finally, Elon Musk wrote in a tweet on February 9th. He has also suggested that retail investors will get top priority in the coming offering. What? Really? Are you going to live up to that promise, bro? Oh my goodness. <gasps> I'm going to I'm going to keep an eye on that, my friend. So guys, let's go ahead and continue. Let's review GameStop. Let's see what we got in the news regarding GameStop. If it's worth it, I'll review it. If it's not, we'll just take a look at the chart. So, Robinhood among those subpoena in Federal probe on squeeze stock manipulation, WSJ reports. So federal regulators and prosecutors are looking into the possible manipulation of stocks like GameStop and AMC during the short and gamma squeezes. Supoining, supoining, supoining. How do you say that word, Shui? I think you say it better than me, my friend. I think you are... See, I knew I di didn't say it right, bro. Information from brokers and social media companies, the Wall Street Journal reports. Robinhood is among the brokers the Justice Department's fraud department and the San Francisco Attorney General's office have asked for information. The probe is into whether market manipulation or other types of misconduct were responsible for the rapid rise in shares. Also, the CFTC has opened a preliminary investigation into whether Reddit users targeted Silver Futures and the iShare Silver Trust. The SEC is also looking into the squeeze trays. The House Financial Services Committee will hold a hearing on market volatility on February 18th. And GameStop decided the regulatory risk of raising capital during the height of the squeeze when its shares skyrocketed above 300 was too great. And actually, guys, there's a little bit of more information about that. I just wanted to say as well that I believe Robin Hood to open New York, Seattle offices. Just wanted to uh, say that as well along the lines. I don't want to get into it too deep, but that's what they're doing. And GameStop didn't cash in on squeeze because of regulatory fears. So GameStop didn't re raise capital at the height of the short and gamma squeeze that hit its shares because executives deemed the regulatory risks too great. Reuters reports citing three sources close to the situation. Although it had already registered to sell $100 million in December, it chose not to pull the trigger despite the stock hitting a closing high of $347.51 and its value running to $33.7 billion. Management felt or the logistics and regulatory risk of releasing preliminary earnings was too great. GameStop shares are up 5%, near $49. Other companies that rolled squeezes higher like AMC and American Airlines took the opportunity to raise cash. ARK Investment Management CEO Kathy Wood said this week that rallies in GameStop and AMC are actually inflating a bond bubble rather than a sign of an equity bubble. And ladies and gentlemen, interesting perspective. I like her. I like her a lot. Uh, I don't know if you have seen some of her interviews. I highly suggest taking a look at them. And let's review right now, ladies and gentlemen. GME, let's see what's happening, my friend. Let's see if you need some... some. One, two, three. Stay clear. <laughs> Guys, I, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what's happening. Oh, interesting. $50.95. Interesting. That candle that is creating on the four hour. Ah, it's four hour. Daily. Bullish. Higher low. Interesting. Hey, is this the price? This could be. It already reached 47, guys. So it kind of makes sense. Reaching 47, and after that, mm, I'm going to keep an eye on this. I'm going to keep an eye on this because if it breaks the resistance level of 62, it could become something else. Starting to look very good. Starting to look much better now. I will say tomorrow will be a surprise, guys. I don't know. 
I'm so I'm talking about the market in general. Maybe it will be like something. Holy mofongo! What the heck happened here? Or or maybe or maybe it's gonna be like oh my goodness opportunities, because the thing is that tomorrow a lot of people get paid. Some people will get paid on the 15th as well, but I think the market can be. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, guys. For me, GameStop, if it breaks above 52 dollars, there's an opportunity to go up, maybe to 62 once again. And I actually see if it breaks higher than higher than this $52 level, it can actually go to 72. So 38% upside. There is potential for GameStop. I think it needs the one, two, three, clear. And maybe it's gonna happen. But patience is the name of the game, man. Wow. Let's review now. Blackberry. What I got up to Sberry? Let's see what's happening, guys, because BlackBerry became another meme Stunless. for some reason. But I don't consider it as a meme stock. I'm going to be very honest. BlackBerry handsets making a comeback with Foxconn backing. So BlackBerry stopped selling its namesake phone in 2016, but U.S. startup Onward Mobility with Apple assembler Foxconn are planning to bring out a BlackBerry headset for the 5G era this year, for the North American and European markets. The new Watagatapitus Berry Blackberry branded handset will include the classic keyboard, an updated camera, and 5G connectivity. More details will come out within the next few months. Onward Mobility, founded by a veteran of Microsoft and Zynga, plans an eventual Blackberry launch in Asia. Chairs of Blackberry, the Canadian company that has evolved into a cybersecurity company, were up pre market but now but have now erased those gains with a 3.7% decline. BlackBerry shares have rallied in recent weeks as part of Reddit-driven retail investment search. And with that said, let's review. What I got that paid to Sberry? Oh, but BB. BlackBerry. Guys, $12.47 is starting to become a little bit better, a little bit to more tolerable for me. If it gets to drop a little bit more, maybe uh, 1071 will be an amazing opportunity. But let's keep it for like this. So if it gets to drop to 1089 and uh, it breaks this trend line, that will be awesome. But for now, I'm liking this because it broke this other trend line over here in the four hour, which I don't love and I, I don't appreciate that much. So the best way to actually invest in something like this will be like, for example, a buy, buy freaking stop, a buy stop at $14, and you're like, I think BlackBerry has opportunity, David. I think it can go up to $100, David. So if you think that, that's a good buy stop. Um, what about if it drops, David? Well, 850s will be a great opportunity as well. You can see that there is a potential of 239%. But only invest in companies that you like and understand. I'm just saying that. Como consejo, but I do like BlackBerry. I think there's a lot of potential there. It's just that the spike happened so quickly, and then it just dropped. That usually happens in the market, guys. Welcome to the stock market. Hello. What the rock is Thank you, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and review now. Boeing. I'm on fire today. I'm just... David, I want you to review this one. No, 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 no. Give me a second. I got to review the news and then we'll get to your favorite symbols. Macron brings, brings up Airbus Boeing settlement in call with Biden. CNBC says French President Emmanuel Macron, je ne parle très bien français, Macron, suggested the President Biden two weeks ago that the country seek a negotiated settlement in the Boeing-Airbus conflict. CNBC reports, Biden responded that relevant teams will follow up but was non-committal on the outcome. The conflict, which represents the world's largest ever corporate trade dispute, has lasted nearly two decades but has escalated in recent years. Back in October, the World Trade Organization awarded the EU the right to impose tariffs on about 48 or $4 billion in American goods in retaliation for subsidies granted to Boeing. It followed a ruling from 2019 that allowed the U.S. to impose tariffs on $7.5 billion in EU goods over state support for Airbus. Meanwhile, 
The state of Washington has since moved to repeal tax breaks that benefited Boeing, while Airbus has announced it will increase loan repayments for the A350 plane to France and Spain in bids to settle the matter. Airbus supports all necessary actions to create a level playing field and continues to support the EU's commitment to finding a negotiated settlement of this long-standing dispute to avoid lose-lose tariffs, the French plane maker said in a statement. We know there is a great interest in resolving the Boeing-Airbus dispute on both sides of the Atlantic, and USTR looks forward to working with the European allies to find an outcome that levels the playing field once Ambassador Ta Tai is confirmed, a spokesperson for the U.S. Trade Representative told CNBC. And guys, a settlement could provide some healing for an industry decimated by the pandemic. Major U.S. airline executives are scheduled to meet virtually tomorrow with the White House COVID-19 response coordinator to discuss travel-related concerns. Holy mofongo, guys. So as you can see, we're trying to talk about Boeing, and then we just got a little bit of the politics, which is like a little bit of Sasson over here, a little bit of Sasson Macron, okay? Okay, my friend, let's review Boeing. I'm excited to see it. And even though it didn't blast off, I think maybe tomorrow this is, could be a, even a more upside for this. I've been bullish in Boeing since it dropped. It dropped from 440s. I got in at a, a 120s. Why? Because it made sense. And you know what? The weekly is still bullish. Looks good to me. I think there's potential for upside. The important thing for me with Boeing is to break above 245. If there's any retracement after that, it's time to capitalize. I'm going to be very honest, guys. There's great opportunities over here with Boeing. I like it. How it's starting to look like it can go up. And the other one that I want to review out of all of this, I think it just makes sense to review, for example, JetBlue. I just want to review JetBlue since we're talking about airplanes and not everybody gets too excited about airplanes. But when there's a drop like this from 21 to motherfucking 6, it makes sense, right? It becomes interesting. <laughs> Super interesting. So, guys, entries around $9 and right now JetBlue going to the upside very, very close to hitting that JP Morgan target. I think we can go to 21 and even 26. Great potential for upside. Just keep in mind that patience is the name of the game, especially with airlines, since they're in a very, very tight situation. Oh, and let's not forget LUV over here, guys. And I know we got 32 individuals. I'm going to be reviewing Sundial pretty soon. Like, I should do PayPal, and then I'll get to the Marie one. So don't don't go just yet. So Southwest Airlines seeking 300 new 150 seat jets reports. So as you can see, Boeing getting more news as well, guys. So what about LUV? Let's review Southwest Airlines. And Southwest Airlines is doing exactly what we wanted to see, guys. I'm expecting that $67 level, which will be equal to 31%. That's it, guys. We got to rotate sometimes. That's how the market works like this, ups and downs. It's a, it's a freaking curve all the time. And you just got to watch out for the right moment, for the right thing, ladies and gentlemen. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and move forward with PayPal. See what we got over here? Now, I know I haven't said hi, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. It's just that there is a lot of articles. You know what? PayPal? No, no, no. I should not do PayPal. I should say hi right now to everybody. And then I'll get to PayPal. And then I'll get to the marriage. No, no, no. You know what? After saying hi, I'm going to get <laughs> I'm gonna get to talk about people getting high. So we're going to talk about marijuana, okay? But let me go ahead and see what we got over here in the chat room. Who we got in the chat room, better yet. Ferrat, welcome, welcome. Jason Park, Greasy Nugget, loving it, loving it. Oh, I already said hi. Peter Good, Tyler Altuzen. What's up, Brian says, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Brandon Morris, Brandon Morris, Brandon Morris. Man, oh, man. SPCE investors are nearly as brave as their astronauts. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> we got Estela Pacheco. Good to see you once again. Scuba Doob. Bienvenido, mi hermanillo. Insider Humberto Villalobos. 
Good to see you. What a gata to Perry. Fat Nuts. John's Dick House. What a great moment to call your names. Both at the same time. Jaishmi. Good to see you, Jaishmi. And John Berkeley. Elijah Clark, my friend. Good to see you. Okay, guys. We're going to talk about the marijuana sector right now. I don't know why I didn't put... Why did marijuana go down? But I think it's because... YouTube doesn't like those headlines. But you know what, guys? Let's paste and go. Let's get started. We're going to do PayPal soon. Twitter, Disney, Netflix, Datadog, JFrog, iRobot, Tesla, and Helion. So let's get started with this one. Edisiasi. Marijuana stocks continue burnout in afternoon trading. Following likely shorts squeeze. No! Yes, after a run that has seen some cannabis names such as Tilray and Sundial Growers more than doubling price through the past five trading days ending yesterday, the sector is off today. Oh, no! Several companies were actually up before the opening bell. They subsequently went into the red and have continued to stay there. An article today in Baron Sites. Ihor Dusanitsky, managing director at S3 Partners, a short selling analytics firm, that a short selling angle may be in play. For example, S3 says that Tilray began the year with a short interest of about 48%, a figure that now stands at uh, around 23%. And financial newspaper reported that according to Dusanitsky, Tilray and Kronos saw the largest yearly decrease in short interest as a percentage of tradable shares. Dusaniski uh, noted that the top 20 cannabis shorts were off more than $4.3 billion in net of financing mark to market losses this year as of yesterday. And guys, everything went down. Aurora went down. Hexo went down. Tilray went down. Canopy went down. Kronos went down. Organic Me Graham. Oh my goodness, I should do a freaking song with this. Guys, let's review now Aurora Cannabis. Let's see what happened. With Aurora after hours. And I'm going to review Tilray and Sundial. Those are the ones that I'm going to review today for the cannabis sector. If you have any other ones for me to review, you can go ahead and ask it after we are done with the news. Okay, guys? Aurora Cannabis report second quarter results. Aurora Cannabis FQ2 adjusted a bit that loss of $12.1 million. Canadian revenue of 67.67 million dollars misses by 1.02 million and shares are actually up after hours interesting 1.6 percent and after that we have an article over here about ACB ACB stock oh what's gonna be my clip today guys what's gonna be my clip Every time I say ACB, I just get CD activated. By the way, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do a clip about the pot stocks. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with that article. And I got to do the sh this song, right? This is the day that show is not the green Tom show. This is my favorite show because it is my show. And yes, guys, I need to continue with Aurora Cannabis. Shares up after FQ2. Revenue rights high on medical cannabis strength. Aurora Cannabis shares climbed nearly 9% in post-market trading after the medical cannabis company posted higher second quarter revenue, held by a hike in high-margin international medical sales. The medical cannabis business brought in revenue of $38.9 million Canadian in the quarter ended December 31st, an increase of 42% from the prior year period. The company posted an adjusted EBITDA loss of $16.8 million 
Canadian in the quarter, which included termination and restructuring costs of $2.9 million. Aurora said that it improved its cash use during the quarter by more than 74% compared with last year and added that it had cash on hand of $565 million Canadian as of February 10th, 2021. The company posted net revenue of $67.67 million in the quarter, an increase of 28% year-over-year, and said that it is continuing its progress toward positive cash flow. By the way, guys, if you have lost money with ACB or any of these companies, go ahead and dislike this video. I don't care. It's like doing a Kamehameha, you know? Release the stress. Release the stress. Release it. But for the haters, dude, thank you for waiting. Now we're talking about the haters, okay? Do, do you have the message for the haters? Okay, I'll put you in. Put a little icy hot on it, turn it sideways, and take it straight up your candy ass. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, ACB, let's re. Oh, bitty, bitty, Bitcoin. Oh, Bitcoin. ¿Qué pasa, mi hermano? ¿Qué pasa? Estás volando. Oh, my goodness, guys. Aurora Cannabis over here. We ACB. ACB. Uh, no, no, Siri, no, don't get activated. Oh, my goodness. Siri always gets activated. What the heck, man? I can't even talk about ACB stock without getting Siri activated. So, guys, here's the thing. Right now, the weekly is bullish. The weekly created a higher high, and we were expecting these kind of levels at 19. We already reached the daily Yes, it did go down. And that was actually one of the things that I was expecting to happen once we had the exponential moving averages cross. This is only the beginning. I want to see if it even goes a little bit more down. If we went a little bit lower, like to 1368 or even 11, I will appreciate that, by the way. But after hours, ACB has actually moved, guys. Let's see over here, guys. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got over here. Looking at Aurora Cannabis after hours. Wow. And after hours, the market move. Insane. Insane. ACB, guys. Is actually at 15, 15. Hey, recovering. Ah, not bad. 15, 15, guys. Look at that. I'm telling you, tomorrow may be some interesting day. Maybe tomorrow we're going to be like, oh, my God, what the heck happened, David? I think, and I said today, guys, in the beginning of the day, I was like, I think I'm going to see a little bit of retracement from the cannabis sector. And it actually happened. Aurora Cannabis went down to 1447 from 1884, which is a move of 23.72%. Right now, after hours, it has moved up to 1515, so it has moved already 5%. So that's actually a good thing because we broke some resistance levels. For example, over here, we broke this one at $14. So it was kind of expected to see this movement. Like I said, if it gets to drop a little bit more, there's great potential. But for now, looking at the short-term target, I look at 31 as a great potential target for Aurora Cannabis. I'm going to be very honest, but it requires a bullish candle above the 50 EMA. So it requires to stay above $16 to continue with the upside. This area, definitely prob problematic in the short term. So I'm keeping an eye on Aurora Cannabis. And then on the other on the other hand, we actually had Sundial. Oh, better Tilray, Tilray. Let's do Tilray. Let's see if this the same article or not. See what we got. So it's the same freaking article. So let's look at Tilray. Same freaking article, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sometimes I try to go fast and I copy it two times. So Tilray, oh, David, didn't you say that this was going to go down? Yes, David, didn't you say that Tilray was going to go down? Yes. My friends, we did go down, and I actually was expecting this because we created some gaps below. We needed to close, and we actually did it. Mira para allá, my friends. It can even go down to $24.90. That, for me, is a great opportunity, by the way, because Tilray has become very, very expensive 
expensive, but they're going to be merging with Afria, which will acquire a lot of their assets. And this is an interesting move. $32 for Tilray. We actually went down pretty, pretty hard, guys, from 66 and that's real, to uh, freaking uh, 31 which is 52%. I kind of expected this. For me, Tilray, if it creates some good rejection, it will be awesome. Actually, uh, after hours, it's a little bit lower. So, mira para allá. If it gets to drop a little bit more, a little bit more, like $24, Pablo, this could be an opportunity. Think about it. Think about it. Tilray going down could be a great opportunity. But we kind of expected this, guys. And you just got to be patient for that opportunity that we will have. Possibly tomorrow, maybe next week. We'll see. Afria, APHA, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see over here, guys. The same thing. Afria did go down. We kind of were expecting this, guys. Mira, it's, it's definitely something that you... Mira, the weekly right now, it created a higher high, which is beautiful. And we have a higher low, which is not bad. The week is not over yet. If that candle gets to close bullish, it's, it can't continue to the upside. But patience is the name of the game. Afria, $16.88. Something to keep an eye on. And you know what? If it gets to drop a little bit more, I will even appreciate it. But for now, you know what? I'm not even going to get in Afria because I'm going to concentrate on Tilray because they're going to merge. Think about it. Think about it, guys. Does it make sense? Does it make sense, Randy? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Randy. Really appreciate it, Randy. And, guys, now let's get let's go ahead and take a look at Sundial SNDL. And, by the way, guys, I got to tell, I got to say this message, like, again, I got to say, if you're going to invest in penny stocks or even stocks in general, Make sure you're using disposable income. Got to pay your baby's education. You got to pay the food, the house, everything. Make sure you're four steps ahead of the game before the game gets gets you, man. Think about it. Think about your four months ahead. How are you looking economically after you pay everything? Get a freaking Excel, man. You, even Google has freaking charts for free, dude. Oh, man, there's a lot of potential here, man. But to move forward, cannabis names like Tilray and Sundial sharply reverse Reddit-driven gains. So it seems like, yes, guys, there was a lot of mentioning about Reddit and all of these companies. I'm actually not looking at these companies because I read them on a forum. I don't do that. I'm glad that there is a forum for people to express their ideas and their creativity. But... I don't follow anything. I follow the news that makes sense and the companies that make sense to me. And after a sharp gains witness in pre-market trading, many of the cannabis stocks are in the red again. We already know this. Sundial growers remain 6% up earlier, guys. And I want to see how SNDL closed and how it is after hours. That's what we're going to do. That's the main difference of this channel from others is that we do technicals. And ladies and gentlemen, the weekly is definitely still bullish. It created a higher high at $3.94, which is not bad. $2.38 was the close. Let's review right now after hours where SNDL is located. This will provide us a little bit of more perspective. And ladies and gentlemen, SNDL is actually at $2.37. It's holding very, very well. And guys, mira esto, dudes. And do that. Chewies and chewets. See that resistance level? Holy mofongo. But, 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 David. Yes, we already were expecting this. And I was actually expecting the retracement. Because this move that's going to be happening right now takes, requires a lot of liquidity. And the liquidity may even take it down to 148. I wouldn't even mind that at all, guys. But I do believe that Sundial has great potential. Right now, they don't have debt. They have the opportunity to invest. Make up your mind, Sundial, because I'm going to be waiting and see what's going to happen next, guys. Let me know in the chat room. Let me know in the comment section. What do you think? Will Sundial go down to the bottom of the ocean and visit SpongeBob? Up? Or do you think that we're going to close with a bullish candle by the end of the week, which is tomorrow? And on Monday, by the way, the stock market is closed, even though a lot of people may work. 
Uh, Sundial can definitely seem to be like it can go to $13, but we'll see how that weekly candle will close. Very important to me, my friends. Very important. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and move forward. Ladies and gentlemen, Sundial. Oh, espérate, pero, espérate, guys. Let me, let me go ahead and leave Bitcoin. Oh, bitty, bitty, Bitcoin. Man, Bitcoin on the one hour. 48,000. Oh, bitty, 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 Bitcoin. Bitty, 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 bitty. Cada vez. Oh, my goodness, guys. Bitty, Bitcoin. Let's see over here, guys, who we got in the chat room. By the way, people that are watching us on TV, I apologize. I'm going to review over here the chat room and see what's happening. <laughs> so, Jason Park is getting a Mars passport. Huh. Hello. Hello. Insider. Oh, some people like the Pikachu. Scuba Doo. What a day. GME HR giving us a finger. Insider. Umberto. What about CTRM? Hey, hey, Umberto. If you're still here until the end, by the way, the end means when we review Helion, PayPal, Twitter, Disney, Netflix, Datadog, JFrog, iRobot, and Tesla, and Helion are the last ones to review. I'm going to try to go fast, guys. What I got to be to Sberry? Huh? I love all these TA. What? TA? TA? Hey, man. So, Elijah, by the way, welcome to the channel, man, Manillo. Hopefully that was good. Intention AI. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> Jason Park, FYI. Monday is the president day. Market might close. It is close. Marijuana was a pump and dump. Marijuana was a pump and dump. Marijuana was a pump and dump. Elijah, I don't think, I mean, I think there was basically that momentum going there the, that's the spark of the interest of the interest of the, on the industry so as we know that these kind of things are going to happen but at the same time it's going to continue because the united states may be legalizing marijuana <laughs> let's see over here guys um i move a lot into the mj sector i know there's a lot of offside potential but bad timing peter if you're investing, you understand that there's going to be volatility. The, art, the, the interview that I saw from Kathy Wood, she said it perfect. There's going to be a base created, which is support. And there's going to be ups. And there's going to be volatility. Bruh. Let's see over here who else we got. Oh, Estela said, said, say hello to my daughter, Emily. Emily, saludos. Espero que esté bien. And kicking booty. Boom shakalaka. And doing good. I hope you're happy. I hope you're having fun. I hope you're trying to make the best of this time. And I hope your mama is cooking some delicious food. And I'm sure she's doing it. Wow. Let's see over here. What else we got? Uh, Peter Good, CTRM is only my ticket request. Umberto, Cloud Shack, Elijah, Mike Parker. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. Stylish Mexican. Saludo, mi hermanillo. Espero que esté bien. By the way, guys, es posible que esté haciendo una versión en español del show. Estoy pensando hacerlo maybe los fines de semana. Si de verdad da éxito, creo que lo puedo continuar haciendo porque muchas personas están preguntando hacer un show en español y yo creo que es momento de, de romper la barrera, bro. I don't know. HCMC, best buy of the week. HCMC, shout out to Amir. Shout out to Amir. We definitely talked about that one with Amir in our Discord. My Parker requests are taken at the end of the show. Yes, thank you, Matthew. Thank you very much. Patrick Ciareta, good to see you. Our data man, Mr. Simon. Holy Mofongo, let's go ahead and review. Oh, OGI. Yes, I can take a look at OGI because I talk about the cannabis sector. But yes, Organigram did dip. And ladies and gentlemen, going back down. Actually, on the daily meta, it can even go to $3. But it was doing so well. But if you look at the weekly, the story changes if this candle doesn't close bullish then be worried if it closes bullish i will say keep an eye on it man because there's gonna be an opportunity pretty pretty soon <laughs> okay guys let's review now paypal pypl why not let's do it 749 i'm trying to make time work you already know guys that i've been like 
David has a lot of news, guys. If we if we let him finish the news, we can request at the end, and it makes sense because it will give us time. Just say hi, say hi, and I'll get back to there. PayPal targets at least fifty billion dollars revenue in twenty twenty five. Yes, PayPal Holdings expects twenty two percent compounded annual growth rate for EPS and twenty percent CAGR. Don't say this one in Spanish, guys. No digan esto en español, okay? For revenue over the next five years, CFO John Rainey said at the company's virtual investor day. That means the fintech expects $50 billion higher in revenue in 2025. The outlook only includes organic growth, Rainey said. I guess it's Rainey said. Hallelujah, it's Rainey said. Notes on February 3rd, PayPal introduced FY 2021 guidance of for 25.5 billion of revenue and non-gap EPS growth of about 17%. Sees 2.8 trillion dollars of total purchase volume in 2025 at a CAGR. Expects 40 billion dollars in free cash flow over the next five years and expects to return 30 to 40% of that back to shareholders through share buybacks. The rest of the FCF will go into investing in its organic growth and into acquisitions, which rainy, rainy say that will be disciplined. CEO Dan Shulman unveiled at the event the company's target for 750 million active accounts in 2025, up from 377 million at the end of 2020. And that was the article. Yeah, actually, I thought there was another one that I want to review. Well, that no, that was kind of it, guys. But it's just that PayPal, okay, guys? PayPal has... A very good potential for 2025 and bitty bitty bitcoin maybe some reason for that but anyways pypl ladies and gentlemen Woo! <laughs> david what is that we're making profit we're making profit but david what is that it is paypal it is going up what is that ladies and gentlemen paypal going up to three hundred dollars as btig said we are kicking booty over here Bruh. even when the market for wsb goes down <laughs> we are over here doing some Cowabunga. ladies and gentlemen that's why patience is the name of the game and that's why we do the news every day because I'm keeping a track of everything that I'm investing and I want to see what's happening. And PayPal, I like what they're doing. I like that they're actually, they actually have a freaking crypto wallet, which is insane. That's why I'm thinking Apple, Apple, makes sense, bro. Makes sense. What what the heck is happening, Apple? MacBook Pro 16 inch. What's happening, bro? What's happening? He doesn't have the M1 chip. I had to order the Intel one. No, 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 no. No, I don't want the Intel. I wanna, I wanna experience the Apple experience with the 16-inch MacBook Pro. But anyways, my friend, let's let's move forward because otherwise I'm gonna get stuck, and I don't wanna get stuck. Some some people may say, "Oh, David, you don't you don't do analysis, bro." And I didn't do anything with PayPal. It's honest. It's true. It's true. It's true. The next step for me with PayPal <laughs> will be to actually. Uh, see if we can get some levels with the Phoebe, Phoebe, Phoebe. Can you see that we're going to do the Fibonacci? Let's see. Maybe Okay, perfect, perfect. So you don't be saying, ah, oh, David, you don't do analysis, blah, blah, blah. Mira, 330s and 340s, okay? Do I need to stay in PayPal longer? Not necessarily. If PayPal gets to drop a little bit to 265, I think it just makes sense. Capish? Okay, let's go. Move forward to twitter let's do it motherfuckers do i have to say it ladies and gentlemen don't forget to slap like now do a to the like button if you haven't subscribed go ahead and do it and ring the bell so you get notified every time we are online Woo! over here guys wow a show in spanish huh a lot of i'm telling you a lot of people are interesting How's up? What's up, Eric Lopez? Woke up in New York City. Brooke Elder. Oh, man, Brooke. Brooke, Brooke, I know, I know. I MCOA, I'm definitely in it as well, my friend. I know, I know. It's just, 
a matter of patience. But dude, be patient with me. Be patient with me. I'm going to take the request after we are done with the news. It's coming up. It's coming up. I just want to review Twitter. Moffat Nathanson removed sell rating on Twitter after standout at growth. So Moffat Nathanson has taken his sell sign off of Twitter after seeing the company's fourth quarter earnings, which revealed concerns about revenue growth. While ad revenue has been strong industry-wide, Twitter's growth is a standout, Michael Nathanson says, and he speaks to the opportunity to attract and retain performance advertisers that are backbone of the digital ad marketplace. He's upgrading to neutral from sell. The valuation continues to hold us back. The firm lifted its price target to 55 from 30, now implying just 18% downside. These guys what the heck, bro? You're, these guys are not considering the Bitcoin and the Ethereum business. I don't know, man. These guys are getting a little bit behind. But anyways, Twitter has turned lower into the broader market, but until minutes ago was on pace to gain for his ninth session in a row. Anyways, I want to take a look at Twitter, guys. That's all I want to do. All I want to do is review Twitter. Oh, my goodness. David. Ladies and gentlemen, this is insane. Hell yeah. Look at Twitter. Oh, my goodness. Our entries still blessing us. Oh, my. Well, the charts, the, the price is not blessing us. We are being blessed by some energy in the universe, you know, with con mucho, mucho amor. Maybe it's Walter Mercado. But, guys, Twitter definitely going to the upside. I do think that if there was a retracement back down to 60, I will appreciate it. These individuals over here, Moff and Nathanson, are saying it can go to 55. Let me see. Did I have it at 30s? I didn't even have it at 30s. So at 55, I'm going to use my, my. I thought I had. Oh, Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank had it? Deutsche Bank? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Moff and Nathanson. Moff and Nathanson. This guy, man. Holy mofongo. Guys, you're going to see my name one day. One day. But anyways, guys. You see this? Kind of makes sense. If it goes down, that will be awesome. But what I look when what they say, what they are saying, basically, guys, is that it can create a, su a support level in the broken resistance, which was 56, 55. It kind of makes sense to me. And I will appreciate if that happens because I do believe that Twitter has way more potential for upside. My target still stands at 75. I just have it with dotted lines. I'm just going to leave it here, guys. But that's my target. And I do believe it can even go to to 86, 93, and even $100. Elon J. Dows has provided us that target. <coughs> let me know in the chat room. Let me know in the comment section. What do you think about this one? Let's go and review Disney, one of my favorite companies. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Mini Spimp, wherever you are, my friend, shout out to you. I hope you and Mini are doing amazing. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have a member Actually, I don't think he's a member yet, but he's a subscriber, though, called Minis Pimp. Disney EPS beats by 0.66 beats on revenue. Yes, this came out at 4.06 p.m. Disney FQ1 non-gap EPS of 0.32 beats by 0.66 gap EPS of 0.02 beats by 0.73. Revenue of 16.25 billion beats by 370 million dollars. Disney Plus subscribers were 94.9 million versus 90.7 million consensus. ESPN Plus subscribers 12.1 million versus 11.5 million consensus. And ladies and gentlemen, let's review over here. By the way, guys, to be part of the Discord, you got to become a member, okay? I, I've seen a lot of people writing me like, David, I can't find this. Well, yeah, you can find it, dude, because because you're not you're not a member. You gotta become a member, bro. Become a member. It will show commitment, and ladies and gentlemen, you will be able to do freaking hadoukens in the chat room. Okay, that's how we do it over here, and I think the members are satisfied. Members, are you satisfied? Hadouken. With the hadoukens, and we're gonna release some more. Hell yeah! <laughs> we're gonna release so much more. Kawabanga. Disney rises 1.9 on surprise profit with better than expected revenue drop subscriber beat. And we already reviewed that, guys. At, um, I just want to review over here this 
quote from CEO Bob Chapek. So we're confident that with our robust pipeline of exceptional high quality content and the upcoming launch of our new star branded international general entertainment offering, we are well positioned to achieve even greater success going forward. Very, very interesting, guys. And you know what? So it seems like I need to review this article. Walt Disney, 1.9% in early post-market action after the first first, first, first quarter earnings easily top profit expectations on revenues that didn't decline as much as feared. The results are first since a divisional reorganization which makes clear that the softer declines in media and entertainment help mitigate a huge drop in the park's products business. That's what I wanted to review. And then I wanted to review here revenue by segment. Disney Media and Entertainment Distribution, $12.66 billion, down 5%. Disney Parks Experiences and Products, down 53% to $3.59 billion. And Operating Income by Segment, Disney Media and Entertainment Distribution, $1.45 billion, down 2%. And Disney Park Experiences, $119 million. What the heck? Oh, oh, Operating Income. Experiences and Products, 119 versus the year ago of 2.52 billion. Wow. Guys, that's how much they were saving. Holy mofongo. Look at that. From 2.52 operating income, 192. Oh, well, actually it went down. Since the last earnings report on November 12th, Disney stock rose 40%. And then over here, guys, the last one for Disney. So their Disney earnings calls subs. Beat leaning a hot star growth. Pen up parks demand updated. Interesting, interesting. Oh, but I don't want to review everything, guys. I just think it just makes sense to review Disney. I like Disney as a company. I think they had to. Oh, David, what is that? We're making profit. We're making profit. But, but, but David, what is that? It is Disney. It is going up. But, 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 but David, what is that? Ladies and gentlemen, Disney is at a hundred and ninety-three modern fucking dollars, guys. So we are actually up after hours one hundred and ninety-three eighty-nine. I'm loving it. I think we're going to get to that target of 200. Very, very close, Randy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. We're getting very, very close. Very excited to do this. Monster kill. Wow. Kill, and what kill, a ride. Kill. I'm going to be very, very honest, guys. Seeing this flag, man. This. Oh, my goodness. We've been riding Disney since 90s, 110s. And we're going to the upside. We were like, man, Disney should definitely start creating more content. Whoa, 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 Disney Plus, Soul, out, movies, out, movies, new content, out, out, out. And look at that, guys, going to the upside, makes sense to me. Disney is looking beautiful, not bad at all. Hey, my friend, Eric, if you're going to spam the chat room, I won't take a look at it, my friend, just because, and I know a lot of people want to take a look at it, and I already know that you are going to request it. So be patient, be patient, be mindful, okay? And ladies and gentlemen, let's do Netflix. Wow, wow, wow. Eric Lopez, gotta have patience. If you don't have patience, things won't work out. Netflix opening Office Canada and dedicating executive to content. Netflix is opening an office in Canada and dedicating a content executive to work directly with the creative community there. And guys, I don't want to go too deep in Netflix, but the reason that I have it is because we discussed Disney, and now Netflix, ladies and gentlemen, getting a little bit of a hit, huh? 557, but I'm still expecting more upside from Netflix. The weekly is still bullish, 557.59. There's still potential to go to 594, and I see more upside, very, very good potential upside, even to 750s. So I'm going to be patient like Eric should be. Right, Eric? Right, Randy. That Eric has to be a little bit quieto, man. Oh, yeah. Okay, guys. Let's go ahead and review data, dog. This one goes out to my friend, Patrick Ciareta. We're going to do it very, very quickly. But 
Datadog EPS beats by 0.04 beats on revenue. Datadog fourth quarter non gap EPS of 0.06 beats by 0.04 EPS of negative 0.05 in line. Revenue of 177.53 million beats by 13.95 million. Non gap operating margin of 10% versus consensus of 2.4%. Operating cash flow was 23.8 million with free cash flow of 16.6 million. And shares are down 2.8% after hours. DDOG. Let's see what we got. DDOG, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it was going down, but look, where are we right now after hours? From 11760s. DDOG, 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 DDOG. Data Dog, ladies and gentlemen, 114. Dollars, so it did drop a little bit, but it's all good. 114 and 50 is not bad, not bad. 2.3 percent, something to keep in mind. And ladies and gentlemen, let's move forward to J Frog. And by the way, Patrick, I'm still bullish on this one. Any retracement will be an opportunity, by the way. Going back down to 110 or going back down to 103 will be a very, very good potential opportunity for DDOG. Let's do JFrog because this one JFrog EPS in line beats on revenue. JFrog fourth quarter non gap EPS of 0 0.02 in line, gap EPS of -0.04 in line. Revenue of 42.7 million beats by 1.18 million, adjusted gross margin of 82.6% and operating margin 5.1%. With that said, guys, Frog is the symbol to review. <laughs> Eric Lopez, keep it clean, man. Keep it clean, man. No, hey, show respect. Crypto Crackhead, I'm going to let the comments slide. I'm going to, Eric, I'm going to let you see what Crypto Crackhead wrote. But, my friend, keep it clean. We're going to do SOS. We're going to do it, my friend. <laughs> Crypto, this is what you wrote. Now get ready for it for Eric. Let's see who does the Hadouken. But guys, let's see over here, guys. So J Frog over here, my friends, I still believe it can go higher. Uh, Fifty, no, actually sixty-five dollars and ninety-three cents was the close for J Frog, and Frog after hours is at sixty-six dollars. So we're actually higher, guys. It looks good to me. Starting to look much better now. I think that we can get to ninety-five pretty soon. Very, very, very not a bad price point either. Not a bad price. If it goes to 95, you're going to be saying, B -b -b David, what is that? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and move forward to iRobot. Patrick, I got you, my friend. I got you. Anything you want. <laughs> Internet warrior. <laughs> Internet warrior. I love that. I like that. I like that term, Internet Warrior. We are all Internet Warriors over here. I think we are. We're we're evolving from where we were at, and we're actually creating a lot of impact by only being online. It's very interesting. Anyways, strong quarter lands iRobot an upgrade from JP Morgan. So JP Morgan is actually upgrading uh, iRobot. Let's see real quick if there's any target no so jp morgan upgrades irobot to an overweight rating from neutral after taking in the fourth quarter earnings report irobot reported solid fourth quarter results fy21 is expected to be an investment year as previously signaled by the company though guidance is stronger than expected we are impressed by irbt's recent execution progress in diversifying its manufacturing mischief toward premium products and higher margin direct-to-consumer channels, which we believe may position IRBT for a surge in earnings in the out year. JP notes that RRBT is trading at 23x the revised EPS estimate, a 28% discount to the one-year historical NTM average, and an 8% discount to the five-year average. The firm assigns a price target of 166. Holy mofongos! 166? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guys, I told you yesterday, iRobot was looking better. 
Look at that higher, high and higher low. Woo! And this hasn't even exploded. Oh my goodness. Let me change this, guys. This line. Let me change this. Let me change it. There you go. 166 JP Morgan, huh? Let's go ahead and um add this target. JP. It's not from Healthy Junk Food, guys. Don't get too excited. It's JP Morgan. It's not JP from Healthy Junk Food. Be relaxed. Be relaxed. JP is a he's a very talented individual from Healthy Junk Food. I know, but my friends, this was by JP Morgan. And JP Morgan can go up. With this, 29%. I'm actually more bullish than JP Morgan. I think it can go back to 197. And ladies and gentlemen, let's do Tesla and then Helion. Once we are done with that, we're going to open the gates for the request. And please be mindful because there's a lot of people. There's 28 people. <clears throat> Eric, I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right, bro. You're the <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> Hello, King Sai. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. We're gonna do Helion right after Tesla and NIO, my friend, and Li. Oh man, that was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> okay, guys. Tesla NIO and Li Auto may be hit by battery cell shortage. Morgan Stanley is asking the question if a battery cell supply shortage could impact Tesla and other automakers. We say the chances are of there not being a material shortage of battery cell capacity relative to demand is remote. We do not we do note that the exact degree of shortages may differ significantly by region. Updates analyst Adam Jonas. My name is Jonas. The risk has been highlighted by the top SX themselves recently. Tesla CEO Elon Musk saw the fundamental limit on electric vehicles right now in general is total availability of cells was the output of factory cells in gigawatt hours and you can't grow faster than that. Ford CEO Jim Farley, the next step is going to be a much more aggressive electrification plan with a subsequent impact on our battery strategy. And we cannot afford to be in the situation we are with semiconductors right now, which is a good metaphor for what you're bringing up. General Motors CEO Mari Barra, we're working to make sure we have adequate supply all the way from the mines. You rightly point that is one of the reasons why we're investing in our cell manufacture. So we want to be in control of our own destiny, not only from making sure we have the ability to have the cells that we need, but also to work on cost improvements and technology improvements. Morgan Stanley thinks the issue will be wa a wild card for electric vehicle automakers and investors sizing up potential disruptions. There may be cost inflation and or volume shortfalls versus many of the more aggressive EV forecasts in the market today. Notes Jonas. Greater innovation may be needed to increase battery yield from factories, yield in the cart, greater energy density, and other innovation, he adds. And guys, with that said, I just want to take a look at Tesla, NIO, and LI. And then... um. I'm going to do Helion, okay? So let's do TSLA. Shout out to everybody in Tesla. Hello. Everything good, my friend? No, don't worry. Don't worry. We're still doing the video. Okay, guys. Over here, we can see $811.66. The daily, the weekly. I don't mind this. I don't mind this retracement at all, my friends. I don't mind it at all. I think it can even go down to 770. And, guys, I think I got Kathy wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's Kathy. Kathy? Like this? It's like Kathy? Kathy Wood, right? It's Kathy? Let me see. No, it's... Oh, Kathy. Kathy. It's Kathy. Okay, guys. There you go. Fix for those who are who were annoyed by that. <laughs> so, yes, guys, I still believe that Tesla can go to the upside. Something that I've been keeping an eye on for quite a while. Any retracement for me going back down to 727, that will be an opportunity. A break of a resistance, as you already know, 906 to continue to 1,250 will be an awesome opportunity. Let me know in the chat room. Let me know in the comment section. Now let's review NIO. 
one of the babers, the originals over here, guys. We enter at two dollars and NIO today, as you can see, did retrace, but it is good because after a break of a trend line, what do we get? A last kiss, and I'm actually expecting some moves tomorrow. It will be an interesting move tomorrow. My target still stands at 65. I mean, we already reached it. So, guys, that, that's good. But then my next target is actually 80s. So, as you can expect, guys, my target, taking some profit out, possibly getting re-entries, and getting some more positions to go to 80s. Kind of makes sense, huh? And ladies and gentlemen, let's review over here. Um, let's review now. Helion. And I'm going to take a lot of requests. And, guys, everything that you have said before, you got to say it again. Okay? I do want to review some penny stocks that, I, that I've been checking out. But I don't know, man. I don't know. I just want to take a look at Helion and do it send the debts. Here we go. Helion gains after unveiling next-gen battery module. This is the David show. It's not the Green Tom show. This is my favorite show because it is my show. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I know there's a lot of YouTubers out there talking about Helion and other EV components and car makers and all of that. But today, we're going to look at the news and we're going to do some technical analysis. Don't forget, my friend, like it, the video. Like it, like it. Helion Holdings Corp. announces the introduction of its next generation battery, battery module. The company says the battery module integrates Toshiba's LTO cells with Helion's technology advancements to achieve longer battery life, higher charging rates, and improve safety. <laughs> The new battery module is slated to be incorporated into the next evolution of Helion's hybrid system. Whether it's our hybrid system or our fully electric powertrain, Helion solutions are designed to give customers the greatest flexibility as they transition to electrify transportation, says CEO founder Thomas Healy. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and review HYLN. Who remembers the consolidation? Who remembers that consolidation? I remember the consolidation. Who? David, what is that? We're making profit. We're making profit. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, Helion finally showing interesting strength. I'm liking the movement. I'm liking that he broke the trend line. I'm liking that he was creating the motherfucking support levels guys very very strong and as you can see the technicals providing us great opportunities for helion as you can see 187 percent is one of my targets but as you already know guys there's some targets below like for example 27 32 percent we got a little bit higher around 34 69 percent 38 dollars is at 86 percent move $53 is at 160s and 184% if we go to the motherfucking $58 level. But David, is that the moon? No, my friend. There's nothing moon related in the stock market. The moon may be a target for you, but for me, the moon gets is too short. It's too short. I like Mars. I like Jupiter. I want to I wanna explore other galaxies, guys. Don't you think about that? Don't you ever think about that, man? I think about it. I think about Elon Musk is definitely thinking about, about that, man. And you know what? We're going to get there. And you can see that once we break the resistance from the moon, we're, we can definitely go to even 69. Shui, comportate, comportate, man, manillo, come on. But you can see that it can even go to $84. Higher than that, David, 125 126 I think it kind of makes sense. Helion with some great potential, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you, <laughs> if you have capitalized on this one, guys, if you have capitalized on this one, you got to let me know in the chat room or in the comment section. Members, give me some adukens, give me some coins. Adukens. I want to know what you have been doing. And that is it for today's 
news. <laughs> We're gonna take a look at your favorite symbols right now. Let me leave bitty bitty Bitcoin in the background. Forty-eight thousand two hundred and twenty-eight. Come on, bitty bitty. Come on, bitty bitty Bitcoin. Let's go. Let's go. What's happening? Do you need more gasolina, bro? Le gusta la gasolina, este, eh? Ladies and gentlemen, let's see. Peter Luneto. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. My brother got in helium. Papo, Patrick is kicking booty on freaking helium. M. Torres finally holding 600 shares at 22 for a long time. M. Torres. Oh, my. Finally moving, huh? Finally moving. Oh, my goodness. Facebook stock. Does it look bullish? Have a 270 call. Oh, is easy. Are you getting into calls and it's going to expire tomorrow? Guys, let me do Facebook first because it seems like easy needs Facebook. If, let's see Facebook, my friend. And I don't know. I'm If you're a beginner, I will suggest buying the actual stock. Facebook 270. We're still, we're there, man. 270. I think Facebook can go up, but tomorrow, mm, I don't know, man. I'm actually expecting Facebook to go down once again. But there is a opportunity to go back up. We'll see. We'll see. There's no confirmation for me. But I can tell you on the weekly, it's still bullish. And I can tell you on the monthly, it's still bullish. So I, I still believe in Facebook. It's just that the consolidation was needed. What I do like, though, is that it's a double bottom, right? We usually uh, means that it's a rejection. If something happens tomorrow, not necessarily. I don't, I, dude, that's the risky part about options. And I wish I was well, like Walter Mercado, man. What can I tell you? What can I tell you? Okay, guys, I'll save some of the action too. Semi are hot with the shortage all over the world. What about the moon ETF? That's pretty moon related. Yo, some layer, not gonna lie. I think I'm gonna buy those 1250 calls like four. What? I'm trying to make it to the dwarf planets. Scuba doob. Dude, Scuba Doob, I love your freaking name, bro. We review SYS here at 7 and he's on fire. Ooh, it's ASYS. Let's do that right now. Oh, as somebody was asking about SOS, but it seems like Eric is not here anymore. Is that what's happening? I don't even know. ADA is killing it for me. Made incredible gains from Cardamo. Hey, my friend. Good. I actually posted a, a freaking... Waka Waka, welcome, my friend. I I posted on the community tab. Wait, actually, let's see what's how's that's going. Let's see how that poll is going on the community tab, guys. Mira, mira. So I asked, what crypto are you investing in? And I got 22%, only nine votes, by the way. 22% Bitcoin, Ethereum, 44%, Dogecoin, 33%, and only one like. Psh. I'm going to like it myself too, guys. Oh, David, are you liking your own things? Yeah, I'm liking my own things. <laughs> don't you think that I like my stuff, bro? Come on, man. I don't care what you think, bro. One hour later. Well, now let's do, <laughs> take a look at ASYS. What is that? We're making profit. We're making profit. What is that? It is Amtech. It is going up. What is that? We're making profit. We're making profit. What is that? Patrick Ciareta to you, my friend. Salud. I hope that you are enjoying this ride. <laughs> Holy Mofongo, my friends, already going up. The break of our resistance making a lot of sense. Already 12.93%. And as you can see, there are a few areas that the price can have issues. Like, for example, $10, which is uh, 36%. $11.45, $45. And as you can see, guys, 98% percent to the upside for asys i still think that it can go even further like 30 dollars and let's see if there's any article about it asys yes my friend base and it's a higher act after hours i'm guessing right so asys beats by 0.14 beats on revenue guys so that's actually legit very very nicely done and let's see what is at after hours 1048 
eight dudes and dudettes. Shoes and shoeettes, yeah! Dudes and dudettes, come on! Dudes and dudettes, yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, 1048, oh my goodness. 33% to the upside. I do think that it can continue. Like I said, I'm enjoying the ride. Congratulations, Patrick Sareta. I am glad that you're happy. Oh, yeah! Randy at the same time. Ooh, loving it, loving it, loving it. Not bad at all. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Eric Lopez, XRP, XRP. <laughs> Eric likes the XRP. So good evening, Christopher Osuna. Huge Hadouken coming tomorrow. Dude. See, Christopher Osuna and I are, I think we're in the same line, man. I think tomorrow a lot of people are going to be like, what? What What, what happened? What? 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 <laughs> Damn it. Almost bought Helium today. Peter, follow your instinct. Okay, let's see. Eric. <laughs> what happened with Eric? What happened? Sold my ADA at like 0.10. Hey, Cloud Shack, did you make some profit? Because profit is profit. Doesn't matter, bro. It doesn't matter. So let's review over here. So let's do SOS. We're going to be doing uh, ENLV. We're going to do CTRM. Okay. So let's start with SOS. I'll send an SOS to the world. I'll send an SOS to the world. I hope that someone... Sting, don't get me. Don't get me. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see over here. What we got? Woo! David, what is that? We're making profit. We're making profit. David, what is that? It is SOS. is going up. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, discuss in our Discord. And Eric, you are not alone, my friend. SOS is actually going to the upside already in profit 131%. Cowabunga. We are kicking booty. Hell yeah. We are doing it right. And we're patient because there's a lot of potential for upside over here to go to $857 to even $17, even $30, and even $80, even $100. Guys, I'm going to keep it there for now. But there's a lot of potential for SOS to the world. Not bad. Not bad at all for SOS. ENLV. I'm blue, Jason Park, you're blue. Gee, you're blue. Ladies and gentlemen, ENLV reach our target and it retraced. The weekly is still bullish though. I'm liking the retracement. 2109 is actually not bad. And if it gets to drop a little bit more, Meta, if it gets to drop a little bit more to around 1670s or 1303s, that will be an awesome opportunity. Let's see if it will get to the next resistance, which is 45. Very interesting for ENLV. Let me do CTRM. And I got over here AMKR. And uh, let's see ACEV. Okay. CTRM. I'm blue. I'm die. Castor Maritime, wow. David, what is that? We're making profit. We're making profit. David, what is that? It is CTRM. It's going up. David. Yes, guys. I enter on this one at 19 cents. Shout out to my friend. Hey, it's me. Ladies and gentlemen, going up. Up and away to 173. Doing very good. Very, very nice. I'm enjoying the ride. And today alone, my friends, today alone, it went up 47%. While the stock market in the cannabis sector went down, the other areas were actually going up, which I actually appreciate, guys, because everybody was like, oh, my God, the market is going down. Ah! No, it's not everything, man. Only a sector. AMKR for my friend over here. Yes, G, you are. You have been here for a few months already. When you get, you start with the with the beginners like John Dickhouse and Peter Lunetto, and then you get to the green one, and then you get to the I'm blue, da ba dee, da ba die, 
And then, guys, that's that. Then the next one is gonna be important. I think Patrick is coming up next with that one. Holy mafungo, Patrick! It's been a while. It's been a while. Holy mafungo. Ladies and gentlemen, AMKR Kicking Booty. Patrick, shout out to you. I actually entered because of you on this one. Already 48% to the upside. And I do believe after hours is moving up. Is it moving higher? AMKR. 2310. Obviously, David is going up, David. 3310. Yep. It's 49%, dude. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, let's see over here, guys. Um, which one to better enter, ACs or ACEV? I don't know. I think both are looking pretty bullish to me. But it's already making the move, G. It's already making the move. And it can do another move. But I don't know, G. Take a look at them. Review. I'm going to do ACEV, right? Oh, did I do it? I know I already did it. No, I'm going to do now. Well, yeah, ACEV. 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 A C V E E T D B T A C E V E V E V. No Siri. Oh my goodness. Siri always gets activated, guys. So the weekly is still bullish on this one. There's not a lot of information, but I can tell you something. It did a Fibonacci over here. Broke a resistance over there at 11:35, guys. Wow, look at this. It broke the resistance. Boom, chakalaka. It reached the resistance. Boom, chakalaka again. If it breaks the resistance, it can go to 1363s, 1450s, and even 17.2. Kind of makes sense to me. And I'm going to add one more detail here. Uh, trend line kind of makes sense to me as well. <laughs> if it didn't make sense to me, I will be worried, guys. Um, and then a break of a trend line. As you can see, guys, break of a trend line. Creating a resistance, creating a higher low, and to the upside. I wouldn't mind some retracement, like going back down to 11.37. Great potential opportunity for ACEV. And let's do now, Billie Jean. To my initial investment of this morning from SNDL when it was a 416. Christopher Osuna killing it. Kicking booty, my friend. Amazing, amazing. Mira para allá. So smart. Took my initial investment out of this morning from SNDL. Look at that. So freaking smart, this guy. Holy mofongo. Bruh. Let's see over here, guys. MCOA. I'm going to do MCOA right now. Marijuana Company of America. Marijuana Company of America. So, guys, we actually reached the 200 EMA. That's what the retracement was happening. The weekly is still bullish. There is potential for this one. But a retracement was definitely necessary for the whole cannabis industry. I think that going back down to 0 0.01 will be an awesome opportunity. I'm going to keep an eye on this. I'm actually in it. GTEH. You see that? GTEH. Gentech Holdings. So, Gentech 0 0.007. Interesting for Gentech. I'm going to keep an eye on this um, as well. 0 0.007. Guys, a lot of penny stocks coming out. Huh? A lot of people getting interested in penny stocks. And when investing in penny stocks, make sure you're investing in, well, you see, in disposable income, never money that you are that you need. Okay? You don't need to motherfucking waste your money Okay, you need to pay your apartment, you need to pay your rent, you need to pay your food, you need to pay your music, you need to pay entertainment. All of that, guys, all of that. But for now, GTEH, let's keep it in mind, 0 0.007. I don't have a lot to say about this, technically speaking. If it gets to drop over here to, I don't know, 0 0.005. Over here to 0 0.03. We'll, 0 0.003 will be awesome to revisit once again 0 0.01. After that, I see 0 0.02. <laughs> Guys, this is too much of a penny stock. And 0 0.09. So let's keep an eye on GTEH, okay? And then over here, it got mentioned USMJ. North American Cannabis Holdings. 
Very interesting, this one. So this one is at 0.004. I actually was trying to look into this one as well. Support and resistance, guys, on the one hour. Weekly. There's great, great opportunities over here. So I'm going to be patient about it on this one. Maybe if it gets to retrace back to 0.0022, that will be an awesome opportunity. So I'm going to keep an eye on this one. There's not a lot for me to say about it. CRBP. Let's see, CRBP, TRCH. Luis, when you are in an older member, we are veterans here. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Joining late, but always trying my best to stay tuned. Danny Corrales, don't forget to like the video, bro. Welcome to the channel. I mean, you guys are genius, master, to pick the stocks. I'm not, but I'm happy to be the blue as old member. Roar. And you're kicking booty. Gee, you have been growing a lot. You, you don't give yourself credit, huh? INXP made it to the video title. Yes, I'm going to rewind to see the review. Yes, we did INXP. We did it, my friend. We did it. And let's do CRBP. Corbus Pharmaceutical. Good evening, Emmanuel Cruz. $3.34. Man, more bullish candles over here for CBRP. Wow, it's been a while since I reviewed this one, by the way. Look at this. It was looking horrible when I was looking at it. Horrible. Horrible, horrible. But now we got a little bit of more structure. Huh? Who has this one? Crypto crack. Crypto, you got to give me a little bit of more details, bro. Don't be saying, don't be, don't be like those that only say, the, no, no, no. Give me details. Ask me. Give me. David, it did a double bottom. And actually, crypto, you didn't have to say it, but that's exactly what is happening. A double bottom, huh? Crypto crackhead. Oh, my goodness. Who would have thought? I'm talking to a crypto crackhead. I'm talking to fat nuts and 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 Philip Drake. <laughs> Guys, over here, uh, CRBP, pretty bullish on the monthly, on the weekly as well. On the daily, starting to look good. Hey, crypto crackhead, I still remember when you mentioned this one. It was pretty low, right? Look at that. Upside $3.34. Not bad. And he can actually go ahead and close the gap of $8.83, which could be a move of 166%. Not bad. Not bad. TRCH. Let's do it. TRCH. Let's see over here. But, 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 but David. Philip Drake, what's up, man? Um, nice to see you, my friend. Dogecoin. We already did Dogecoin, but I can do it right now. Right away so torch lights on the daily created a higher low the weekly is still very bullish i wouldn't mind seeing torch light go back down to 92 cents by the way um but it looks to me that it can go to 674 guys he's already creating higher highs so now i'm expecting higher lows and it can definitely continue with some more upside very very nicely done my friend a good find following the trend line good it's 8.37, guys. I'm almost done with the video. MVIS, Mike Parker? No, let's do it right now, my friend. Feel the gap. <laughs> Two requests on my end. I want to enter QLGN. QLGN and AGEN. Okay. With Meta soon. Oh, nice. So let's do now um, M MVIS. MVIS, guys. I'm kind of hungry, so I'm going to be finishing the video, which is Microvision. And guys, Microvision did break exactly our expectations, guys. We went nuts on this one. Risk reward ratio was very, very good. And as you can see, we went up already 179%. It is creating a gap, so that gap can be closed. I'm going to go ahead and document the higher high. Move this to the low. And close the gap maybe to 1616. I wouldn't mind seeing this go back down to 1135. But the weekly is definitely bullish. If we get to close bullish with a week like this, I'm expecting more upside for the next week or by the end of the month to continue to the upside and continue to even to 27, which is my next target. QLGN, QLGN. See over here, guys. QLGN. 
Yes, TRCH gonna kick some booty. Yeah, that's how I read it, man. Love it, Peter. Good. Love the energy. So QLJN 388. Let's look at the weekly. Man, this 200 EMA, $120. Interesting. See the resistance. See the supports. See over here. Okay. Man, this can go well, huh? QLGN. QLGN. You know that QLGN has to break above this 50 EMA, though. It's the only thing that I'm, I want to see better from it. But it does look to me like it can even go to $19 very, very easily. Yeah, close above $6 will be awesome. Starting to look very interesting, my friends. Starting to look very, very interesting. I'm going to keep an eye on that, my friend. QLGN. Mm. Then we got AGEN. AGEN. A genus. A genus. A genus creating a double top over here, huh? Reaching the resistance. But it's looking very good. I still think that it can go to the upside. Yep, to 623. The monthly is still bullish, but it's just that that area, my friend, was a strong, strong zone. You can see that that resistance level, very, very strong. And it didn't close bullish on the daily. Okay. This, actually, this trend line sucks. Let me look at the weekly. This is what I like. I like the weekly. The weekly looks much better. So there's potential for upside, but I wouldn't mind a retracement back to 448, which will be a great opportunity. Keep that in mind. But, hey, it did go up, my friend. It did start to go up 22%, and it just retraced back down. That's why sometimes you can't invest using a tr uh, stop loss, and that will basically secure some profits if it goes down. Let's see over here. Um, TRXC at TR. What, what do you say, Matthew? TNXP. TNXP. You see, sub, my friend, Enoch Lion. It's good to see you. Let me review. Ha, how do you know I'm dressed as Rambo right now, David? <laughs> Man, because great minds think alike. <laughs> Okay, guys, let's review TNXP. Oh, SENS, definitely we got to do SENS. So TNXP. Tonics Pharmaceuticals. It reached our target, by the way, guys. It did reach our target of the 200 EMA, which actually made sense. I'm expecting tomorrow maybe a little bit of retracement, but if it closes above $2.04, we're going to continue kicking booty, guys. There's a lot of potential for TNXP, and I do have some positions as well. Very glad that I got in because I'm up more than 74%, guys. I entered this one like 50 cents. I entered on this one like 50-something. It's 247%, guys. Already making profits. Not bad at all for TNXP. Then let's do SENS. But, 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 but David, did you do no 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 none of the mention? No, I have not done none of the mention. I can add it to the list, and I can do Ideonomics too. I can finish the video with those three: SCNS, none of the mention, and Ideonomics. So SCNS, guys. <laughs> but David, are you worried about this? No. Why, David? Look at the weekly, bullish. Look at the daily. Creating a higher low. Look where the rejection was below the candle's body. For me, ladies and gentlemen, SCNS is ready to pick up some speed because we're going to go possibly to $5 pretty soon, guys. We were at $381 today. We closed at $381. We did go to $425. But for me, $5, very, very easy, very much achievable. And after that, I see way more upside. But for now, los pies en la tierra y zapatos de la gloria. And yes, guys, 529 will be awesome to see. Keeping an eye on that, 127% for upside. No, 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 no. We enter a little bit lower than that, my friend. About 160s. That's 224%, oh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. 
Beautiful, beautiful. J-Ho, my friend. I haven't done Ideonomics, and you know what? Peter Good, I got to bump Ideonomics from Nano Dimension, bro. We're going to do Ideonomics right now. Let's do I-D-E-X for my friend J-Ho. We did G. We did SOS. We did SOS. We just did it. You missed it? Did you miss it? Ideonomics, ladies and gentlemen, $4.75 retracing, which is not bad on the weekly. Turning bearish, which is a concern, guys. But you know what? I'm going to keep my head up high because the retracement to $4.75 kind of makes sense. And as you already know, Ideonomics is involved in the fintech game. And I think there is still potential for upside. Now, the 475 level is not bad because, hey, guys, we just broke the resistance level, okay? We broke the resistance. We had to go up. We had to go down. And I don't mind this at all. And if it gets to drop lower to 348, I think there's way more potential. This company, for me, even though they are a very different uh, strategy that may uh, confuse some, but I do think there's a lot of value. I think that 127%, which is $10, can be achieved. We already have reached our first target, which was 475. Now we're just waiting for the next move. I'm liking that it broke this resistance and it's creating a support. That's all I'm waiting for this. And if it gets to break the trend line by tomorrow or next week, Papo, we're going to kick some more booty. Right, Randy? Oh, yeah! And then let's do none of the mention, none of the mention. None of the mention. And in the end, I'm still not in on IDEX. You guys talk about it every day. I need to hop on board the train. Crypto, just research a little bit about it. Just research a little bit about it. I already did a video about it, but I just don't want to go up through it, about it again. But check it out. Check it out. It has a lot of potential, my friend. Um, so none of the mention for me on this one, the trend line. Looks very interesting. Looks very good. Still in a upward trend. The daily today closed with good rejection on the 14 EMA. And by the way, crypto, if you look at the ideonomics um, structure, it looks very similar to none of the mention as well. The weekly over here is still bullish. And I'm still expecting that $22 level hit. Not by tomorrow, guys. If it happens tomorrow, well, amazing. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, I'm going to be patient for another opportunity. Right, Randy? Oh, yeah! None of the mention for me has a lot of potential. Even ARK Investment is talking about it, guys. Let's see over here, guys. Oh, G, you said SOS and QS. I'm going to do SOS again. But G, please, please, please pay attention, G. Come on, G. So SOS is still bullish on the weekly. And the daily close mighty bullish. I'm enjoying that. And I actually think that by tomorrow we can go up back to 722 and even 857. I think that tomorrow we're going to be like, dang it, David. Things actually move. Because there's a lot of optimism in the air and I like it. I think we're in a bullish run, which kind of makes sense. Hopefully we'll see, right? Bitcoin right now, 47,823. Bitty, bitty, Bitcoin. No, bitty, bitty. What you doing, bitty? Come on, bitty, bitty. What a strong resistance, huh? But guys, you know what? The other one is QS. And I'm going to review now. QS and that's it. Thank you for looking into those, my friend. Brooke Elder, thank you for being here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. That motherfucking bell. So QS for me is kind of getting ready. Kind of getting ready, guys. 44.92. 44.92. Let's see over here. For QS. Currently at $47.24. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, QuantumScape actually was looking better. And there you go. Going up 5.2%. Not bad at all. None of the mention to have merged with Meta. I mean, I'll sell it and buy it back, but never selling my NNDM. <laughs> Why did my stocks go down today? The big guys taking their profits out. And retail investors as well. Yes, you know that, you know that they're scalpers. 
So yes, there's scalpers out there. It just goes up and down, up and down. And people try to take profit just like they did with freaking Quantum Scape, guys. Everybody was so excited about Quantum Scape, and this is where everybody started taking profit out. Whoa! It went down. Kind of sucks, huh? Dang, tomorrow is Chinese Korean New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks so much, Chinese New Year sell-off. Hey, it can happen. It can definitely happen. And on Monday, the market is closed. So maybe I'll do a video in Spanish. Maybe, maybe that's it. On Monday, I'll do a video in Spanish. And guys, if you don't understand Spanish, I'm sorry. Pero lo voy a hacer en español porque muchas personas lo están preguntando. Y yo hablo español. And I speak English too. But guys, gracias for being here. Felipe, thank you for being here. Great show. Great Discord. Look at those beautiful words from one of our members, guys. Felipe Nunez Lemus. I appreciate the support, my friend. I really do. And guys, when you are supporting this channel with a subscribe, with a like, with a share, Or, or with a, not a share to sit down, but if you uh, support this channel by providing us super stickers, super chats, or even becoming a member, you're helping this channel grow. And my intentions here is to help you all. I do the videos con mucho, mucho amor, which I enjoy, guys. I really enjoy you asking questions. I really enjoy the conversations. It doesn't matter what political affiliation you are doesn't matter who the heck you are maybe you're from mars i don't even care shout out to people in mars oh yeah i don't think we're there yet but we're maybe one day we'll get there and ladies and gentlemen thank you all for being here really appreciate it check out youtube.com slash d-e-i-v-e-d let me go ahead and see how our poll went let's see how the poll closed or it's still open but whatever you understand what i'm saying let's see youtube.com slash david slash community we're here let's see what we got let's see what we got and ethereum and dogecoin are winning holy mafongo 13 votes got votes 13 votes and only two likes that's it for today thank you all and as always have a beautiful evening <laughs> Monster kill, kill.